Hello and welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Nate Garlock, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're in St. Mary's for a big time WBL showdown between the Memorial Riders and the Shawnee Indians. Nate, pleasure to be with you. Not many losses between these two teams and not much separating them in statistical categories either. Now this is a huge game tonight in the Western Buckeye League. This has a, become a big rivalry. You know, as, as most people who follow soccer know, Shawnee has just dominated the Western Buckeye League over the last four years as they have yet to lose a game in some four years and some change. And this year, not quite the same dominating team that I think everybody's been used to seeing, but still finding ways to get the job done. They get incredible goalie player, their young goalie, Drew Niedemeyer. Um, Caleb Miller out on the field doing just about everything on offense and defense from them. They still have a lot of skilled position players that remain from that state championship run last year. So this is a team still trying to figure some things out, but obviously um, it is working as they have yet to lose. 5-0-3, uh, the record coming into tonight. And on the other side, St. Mary's, they got the one blemish to Salina, a very good Salina team that really challenged the Indians earlier this year. And... Uh, St. Mary's would love nothing more than to come away with a victory tonight, give Shawnee that first WBL loss in a long time, and even everybody up at the top of the standings. Shawnee wearing the white uniforms. They start with Drew Niedemeyer in goal. He starts with Coda Miller, Alex McGuire, Noah Scheid, Hunter Drury, Rhett Frazier, Jaden Harrison, Connor Heitmeyer, Ethan Parlopiano, Tate Bender, and Caleb Miller. St. Mary's wearing the black uniforms tonight. Cody Balwig starts in goal. He starts with Cody Burt, Will Manker, Connor Russ, Doug Rupert, Aiden Jeffries, Vincent Holtzapple, Adam Chivington, Braden Keller, Brady Triplett, and Reese Triplett. You see Shawnee trying to get things out uh, off of their defensive side here as St. Mary's is doing a nice job keeping things down here on the offensive end. Shawnee's had some injuries they've had to overcome this year. You see Colin Shy number nine, out there. He's coming back from an ACL tear. They've been managing minutes, but he's beating more here as of late. And then Alex McGuire, as you see the first shot get sent high. Alex McGuire actually has been out for a while managing a hamstring injury that he got uh, a few weeks ago. And he's out there tonight. It'll be interesting to see how much time he gets tonight. First shot taken by Doug Rupert goes high and wide. So a Shawnee goal kick. You mentioned Alex McGuire, now a senior. Hard to believe. We've seen this guy play a lot of soccer for Shawnee in his four years. Four-year letter winner, a leader on this team, and good for the Indians to have him back in the lineup. Ball knotted up in the air at midfield. Booted forward. That was St. Mary's number seven, Coda Miller. My eyes trying to adjust here. I couldn't quite see that number, but... Got it here as Shawnee sends this deep. Ball on the right side. That's Aiden Jeffries. Jeffries carries right into Scheid, who takes it away only briefly. Ball knocked around. Scheid will get it back. Scheid, nice move. Gets around a defender. Sends it up top. It's Hunter Drury. Now ball back for Alex McGuire, but taken away. Shawnee Indian takes a tumble. Both teams pinging possession back and forth. Ball finds McGuire. McGuire to Drury. Drury drops back for Tate Bender. One of the things that has really led to Shawnee kind of being able to pick up right where they left off after losing so much talent last year um, off that state championship team was this team has a lot of kids who have played a lot of soccer together. They, a lot of these kids were on the same club team together, and, and that's really kind of meshed here as they've hit the varsity level, and this year really getting a first opportunity to get extended runs together. St. Mary's looked like they were going to threaten. They still have possession with Rupert. Rupert closed off by Scheid. Scheid gets a foot on it, and Scheid, a nice job shielding Rupert off, drawing the foul and a free kick for the Indians. We've seen Shawnee have to play a lot of defense here early on, and St. Mary's has done a nice job keeping things down on the offensive third. Shawnee is looking to try to flip the field here. A big leg on the keeper, Niedemeyer. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that as you see the free kick go, but his punts also, he, I mean, he has the ability to uh, pretty much cover almost the entire field with his punts, and that can really be a big advantage when the offense gets, uh, gets a clean run. Indians will throw this in on the left side. I know that... Uh, due to our setup here, you might not be able to see some of the action 
in that left near corner. We'll try to bring it to you via words rather than images throughout the match when the ball gets down that way. But I'll tell you what, other than that, great facility here in St. Mary's. Nice video board that you won't be able to see on your screen. Yeah, it's the first time I've had the opportunity to be here. It's not, um, you know, I think a lot of people think of that brand new field out by the high school and, and that facility over there, but a lot of tradition here for St. Mary's um, on their soccer field, wanting to keep things here. They do a great job. It's in great condition tonight. The stands and everything, it's just a great place to come and watch soccer. Dakota Miller's free kick, excuse me, that was Vincent Holtzapple, his free kick right into the paws of Niedermeyer who grabs it. And you'll get to see that leg on the punt as he sends this one very deep. It's about 70 yards or 80 yards in the air as Shawnee gets possession. They drop it back, now taken away. Nice job by Connor Rust, excuse me, Will Manker. And Manker hits the deck. Now the Indians, Miller. Miller tries to play a ball to a running Hunter Drury, but it's knocked away nicely by St. Mary's, but passed right back to the Indians as it's cut out by Aiden, excuse me, by Ben Sewell. Sewell so did a great job of anticipating and seeing that one. You see McGuire went to the midfield trying to get a run here deep, plays it over to Miller. Miller almost with a chance, but a good job by Connor Rust sliding over and knocking it away. It's still with the Indians. How about that ball over the top? Quick restart by Shawnee that time as they were hoping to be able to catch the St. Mary's defense napping. And another nice defensive stand there by Coda, I'm sorry, by Vincent Holtzapple. I'll get my rosters sorted out here shortly. Sorry for the confusion. Now McGuire falls to the deck. Shide tries to close off his man, but ultimately drawing the foul is Doug Rupert. Free kick for St. Mary's. Our scoreboard tonight sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. Free kick will be dropped on the edge of the box, knotted up in the air, but not far. Now toward goal. Nice job closing off the attacker by Connor Heitmeyer. Ball cleared away by Shawnee, a throw for St. Mary's. Yeah, it looked like St. Mary's is going to have an opportunity there, but nice defense by the Indians to close that one off. And Drury's going to try to send this one up to the midfield. And ball gets behind the defense, giving chase. Are both number sevens? That's Holtzapple and Coda Miller. And Holtzapple called for the foul. A nice step but right in front of the referee who blows the whistle immediately. So a free kick for Shawnee, perhaps a threatening spot. Yeah, there was some contact coming out of both players that time, but with Miller hitting the ground, Shawnee gonna have a, is going to have an opportunity here as it looks like McGuire is going to take the free kick. Three, now four players on the edge of the box for Shawnee. Blows the whistle. McGuire sends it into play near post and headed away by Holtzapple. You had Drury right there as he was trying to head it backwards, but just out of his reach. Nice bending ball down the right side by Cody Burt, but ultimately shepherded out of bounds by Heitmeyer. He'll pick it up to send it back in for the Indians. Sends it back for Rhett Frazier. Frazier boots it down the right side. There's Cody Miller. Now the other Miller, Caleb. Caleb's brother, Andrew, graduating last year, an All-American for the Shawnee Indians who made it to that state final and won the first boys state final in Lima Land history, which is crazy to think. We have so much quality soccer in this area. And it was a great game as well. And you know, Shawnee, though, not satisfied with just the one, you know, as they didn't want it to look like you know, it was a fluke or just a one and done type of thing. You know, they've already built a kind of a history uh, of success and, you know, they know what the measuring stick is and what the expectations of this program are. But with this new group here, they're just as hungry to get back down to Columbus. Now St. Mary's trying to counter, but Parla Piano stepping up and taking it away for Shawnee. Here's Tate Bender. 
Defender Parlopiano takes a heavy touch and it's taken away. Right side, Aiden Jeffries. Jeffries down the right, but scoots out of play. That's not something you're going to see too often out of a lot of these Indians players. You usually are used to seeing them be able to play the ball at their feet. We get pretty good touches. That time, Parla Piano just a little bit too much. And Shawnee fortunate to get that throw in. High press from St. Mary's, and they're able to take one away from the Indians. Ball passed up to Braden Keller. Now maybe a chance. Here's the shot saved by Niedemeyer. Still trouble. This one knocked toward goal, knocked up in the air by Parla Piano. Great opportunity for the Rough Riders that time, but turned away by the good goalie play of Niedemeyer. And then Parla Piano was back there to help him make sure they clean that one up and get that one out. Referee asks for a re-throw, so St. Mary's will throw it in. Reese Triplett. Ball knotted into the box. Closed off. Chance for a shot. Nope. Good defense by the Indians. Sliding over to knock that away was Jaden Harrison. Harrison that time. He didn't try to do too much. It was the right decision. Just wanted to get over, clear that ball, let the defense come down and try to settle it. Right now, Shawnee is just giving up a lot of space right there in the middle of the field in front of the box. And coaching staff can't be too happy with that. Now a cross, knocked down by the Indians. Ball still at the edge of the box. Now finally cleared away out of the final third. Back to Holtzapple, who sends it down the left side. He finds Doug Rupert. Rupert into the box, and Parla Piano knocks it away. A dangerous play there, but Bender does a nice job with the no-nonsense clearance. Yeah, that was kind of one of those 50-50 kind of no-man land areas. It looked like Niedermeyer maybe was trying to call off Parla Piano, but Parla Piano not wanting to peel off of it. They both kind of hesitated there. Parla Piano fortunately got that one knocked away. St. Mary's is going to continue to come. Another opportunity. This one gets headed back. Indians clear. They try to counter. They don't have the numbers, though, as they pull it back. Here's Shide. Shide runs right into the defender. Couldn't quite control it as it's taken away by Chivington. Now down the right, it's going to be St. Mary's throw. And our first substitute of the game checking in, it's Jake Deitering as we step aside as well. 27-35 left here in the first half, 0-0, score tied. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to St. Mary's where the score is 0-0. Evan Skilleter and Nate Garlock with you. Great matchup between two WBL powers. Dietering the sub, knocking it in the air and out for a St. Mary's throw. Reese Triplett will pick it up, sends it to the edge of the box. Parla Piano knocks it out, but St. Mary's still in possession only momentarily. This one cleared all the way behind the defense up the left side. Deitering gives chase. Ball out for Shawnee throw. Checking in is Alex McGuire. In for Shawnee, number eight, Alex McGuire. Parla Piano now. That ball cleared away. Now St. Mary's gives it right back to Shawnee. Back to Parla Piano. Here's Frazier. Ball pinged around the back line, ultimately taken away by St. Mary's. Shawnee playing with fire there. Up the left side. Nice footwork, but knocked away. Miller clears it back to midfield. Spacing from the Rough Riders here in the early going. They've done a great job of making sure they put themselves in the right position, really putting pressure on the Indians. And we 
we've seen that translate into a couple of good opportunities that they just haven't been able to cash in yet. For Shawnee, you do not want to continue to let St. Mary's have those looks. Keep, you let a team continue to have those opportunities and bad things can happen. Good speed by Drury as he gets around one defender but runs into another. He took a tumble and looked toward the referee, but a good no call there as play continues. Keller up the right side, giving Chase his triplet. Triplet goes down. It might be Owen Will, actually. Blue on black. Tough to see. I think down there in the corner, actually, with Carlo Piano yeah, fighting uh, for uh, position on shot. number 23. That was Owen Will. Uh, Shawnee, I think, was kind of fortunate that, that one didn't end up being a corner for St. Mary's. Is just at the last minute, Will's heel kicked that ball back. St. Mary's gets it in. This is triplet. Knocked away by Heitmeyer. More possession in the middle of the field. Diagonal ball down the right side. Will puts a foot out. But Quint can't quite bring it in as Shawnee will have a throw. St. Mary's that time was hoping to play outside in. Just wanted to get over to Will, see if he couldn't send one into the box. Ends up taking an unfortunate hop off of his shin. Caleb Miller there to send that one back. Miller dribbles between two defenders, but closed off nicely. Shawnee keeps possession. Nice slide tackle there by Cody Burt in the midfield. Now St. Mary's deep shot toward Niedermeyer who knocks it down nicely and controls. Shot on goal there for Doug Rupert. Great awareness that time by Niedermeyer knowing he didn't need to catch that one or try to fall on it, just wanted to keep it in front of him. Make sure he knocked that one down and then communicating effectively with his offense, trying to get them downfield. Two shots for St. Mary's. None so far for the Indians. Right now, St. Mary's just seems to be doing a much better job of controlling that midfield and giving them opportunities. This one's going to end up back into the keeper's hands as well. But Shawnee just hasn't found themselves with a lot of opportunities to get runs. When they have had someone run free, St. Mary's defense has been right there to send them back. Here's Miller. Miller tries to put it behind the defense, but no runners as the goalkeeper Ballweg comes up to grab it. Ballweg's punt goes out, so they give it right back to Shawnee with 22-23 to go here. Still 0-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Scheid goes down, ball touched by St. Mary's. Heitmeyer into Scheid. Scheid turns and he fell and he's called for the handball as he slipped and went down. Yeah, that time it's just unfortunate play as they played the ball right at Scheid's feet and tried to turn to get upfield, lost his footing and as he came down, he just naturally grabbed a hold of that ball. St. Mary's right now not getting a lot of pressure as they're able to set up and try to put something, trying to get themselves a lane to get a shot on goal. Cody Burt's shot was blocked. St. Mary's still with possession. Looking for a cross is Will Menker. Menker still trying to work this ball up and now knocked away by Shawnee as Connor Heitmeyer sticks a foot in from behind. And it's good recognition by Heitmeyer that time as St. Mary's player looked like he was trying to set him up to maybe be able to get that one knocked out and give his team a corner. Heitmeyer did a great job reaching his foot in there to knock that one in to make sure it was a throw in. There's a shot with nothing behind it by Owen Will, but can't fault him as St. Mary's could not find a seam in that defense to get a good shot off. Ultimately, another shot and another save by the Indians. Niedermeyer letting things slow down, letting his offense get downfield before he sends that one. And now I behind. Mean, just a tremendous asset to be able to send a punt that far as Scheid was able to get to it, tried to for the cross, and almost they were able to get that corner. Good job recognition by St. Mary's to get over there and get that save. Ball 
Punts it to midfield. On the end of it is Doug Rupert. Rupert has it knocked away by Miller. Cody Burt, though, able to grab it for St. Mary's. Burt cuts inside. Some space for Burt on the right side. Burt still working up. Tries to get around a defender, but it's ultimately dispossessed. Dispossessed, excuse me. A little push that time by McGuire is that one's definitely going to get the whistle. St. Mary's will get the free kick now. Is see a little bit of frustration coming from the Indians. Spent a lot of time playing defense here in this first half. Under 20 left to go. They just can't quite seem to get things going their way down across midfield. The free kick, relatively dangerous spot here. Vincent Holtz Apple puts it down. Holtz Apple, back post, low driving ball, knotted up in the air by Shawnee. That was Miller putting it in the air and then ultimately hit out of play. Some substitutes ready to check in here. 24, Will Ross checking in for St. Mary's. 13, Hunter Drury checking in for Shawnee. He'll replace Coda Miller on the right side. Drury, one of those players for the Indians, he may not be the most well-known name, and maybe not a lot of people recognize what he does for this team, but he does just a little bit of everything. I know last year during that tournament run, they were able to put him pretty much anywhere. He spent a lot of time all over the field being able to come in quickly, give them good minutes, let some of these guys get, get some good breath. He bided his time, and now he's a huge part getting um, – significant minutes for this Indians team and they've been able to rely on him to give them some good time when he's out there. Now top of the box, loose tackle, still with St. Mary's. That's Braden Keller, Keller to the outside now. Keller looking for space, can't find it. Parlopiano in defense, he's able to take it away. But his pass taken back. Here's a cross to the box, knotted in the air, still some danger, now up. And still toward the edge of the box, St. Mary's with another chance and now finally cleared away by the Indians. But even those clearances from Shawnee have not really averted danger as they've kept it close to the box and St. Mary's continues to threaten. Yeah, a lot of those headers that they just had didn't really put it anywhere that would keep it from being dangerous. St. Mary's continue to try to press. It's, it's a lot of that start with Keller. He's so dangerous, so good for this Rough Riders team as Shawnee needs to know where he is at when he is on the field. St. Mary's just continues to have good opportunities and extended time down the offensive end. So miscommunication there again for the Indians. St. Mary's with it back. Braden Keller sends it outside. A little bit of space to work with. Here's the cross. And did that take a touch? It did not. So a goal kick for Shawnee as Captain Aiden Jeffries checks into the game. 16 minutes, 58 seconds left here in the first half. Sub in for St. Mary's number five, Aiden Jeffries. Yeah, this is kind of following the same game script that a lot of this, a lot of the Indians games have so far this season. They've spent a lot of time having to play defense and, you know, I think a lot of people, they're used to seeing the identity of Shawnee being on the offensive end where they've had some really uh, dangerous players. They've been able to force things on the offense and kind of dictate how things are played. This year, their identity has been defense. They've had to kind of buy into that and, and realize that that's where they're going to be able to do their most damage and, and be a good team is playing solid defense and then making sure that they take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves later in the game. We're seeing that here, at least in the early going. Parla Piano trying to get rid of it for Shawnee in the corner. Taken back by St. Mary's. Ball stays in here, Shied. Shied sends it in behind the St. Mary's defense, and you can tell what Shawnee is trying to do. But as you've mentioned a couple times, Nate, they're just not able to get a runner on the end of those diagonal balls. Yeah, they're just trying to send those balls and see if they can't get it past the back line, want to take advantage. And Drury's going to draw the whistle that time. 
But you know, the problem with that is if you're going to send those balls deep and you want your uh, your strikers and your offense to get down there to those, they have to make those runs. And at least here in the early going, we're just not seeing them time those up well enough to get a good opportunity. Free kick for St. Mary's. Holt Sapp will put it down. Chance from the top of the box. Left-footed shot, no good. Well wide and no touch there, so a goal kick as another sub checks in. This is Adam Jamai. Jamai with two assists this season. He's got some wheels for Shawnee, so if they're trying to send that ball up behind the defense, this is a guy that certainly has the speed to get on the end. Ball out of play on the far side. Drury will send it in. Actually, he drops it. Down the right side. Cut out by St. Mary's. Right back to Shawnee, but misplayed. St. Mary's looked to try to go quick that time. I don't think everybody was on the same page as they were looking towards the official. I think some of the team thought that that one was going to stay with Saint, or with Shawnee. They have it here. Nice job bringing it down by McGuire. Now to the middle, Jamai. Jamai drops it off for Miller. Miller took a heavy touch and a nice job coming back by Aiden Jeffries. He gets the possession back for St. Mary's. Now down the right side into the box. Knocked out. St. Mary's throw sliding over in defense there was Connor Heitmeyer. Now Scheid takes away the throw in. Scheid tries to get around a defender, can't keep his feet. Reese Triplett getting the better of that matchup. Now Scheid comes in and gets his revenge as he takes it back. St. Mary's again, though. It's a nice physical game. It's not a dirty game by any means, but definitely some physicality out there as these two teams fighting hard to get the first goal. At least uh, here so far in this first half, it seems like more often than not, St. Mary's has been getting the better of those exchanges. As they have just been the more physical team. Now taken away by the Indians again. St. Mary's spending a lot of time in that final third. Now Jamai. Jamai, his touch doesn't quite work out, and now St. Mary's called for the foul. Free kick for Shawnee. By that time, looked like he had his feet caught up underneath him. Almost kind of did the splits as St. Mary's defender tumbled over him. The official says that there's forcible contact, so the free kick for the Indians. They're going to have an opportunity here to see if they can't get something set, give themselves a, their first real good look at a shot on goal. We parla piano to take the free kick. Three players on the back post sent in. Off a of Shawnee head, ultimately into the hands of Ballweg. I believe that was Hunter Drury there who got a piece of it with that long hair. Yeah, it wasn't quite the look or the uh, touch they would have liked as it looked like maybe it was more of a glancing blow. Ended up being a rather easy save for Ballweg. Now Shawnee will throw. 11 and a half minutes to play first half. They have a whistle on the backside here. Not sure what the call is. They're going to give the ball back to St. Mary's. Not sure either. I'm not sure if they called offside there. Either way, it's a free kick. I think it's going to have to be offside since it's the free kick. And not quite sure how it seemed like the official back here wouldn't have necessarily been the one in position, but he explained it to the Shawnee coaches. And either way, ends up in the St. Mary's possession. Possession pinged back and forth. Ball still in the air. Now taken by Shawnee and Drury. Now some space for Shide to work up the left side. Shide's got some speed. He's closed off by Will Ross. Shide cuts back to his right. Now plays a ball to the back post, and no one making a run once again. Ballweg comes out. 
saw McGuire on that back side as he was the closest Indian to it. You know, it wasn't the greatest ball played in, but you also have to wonder if maybe McGuire didn't have the typical speed that we're used to seeing out of him as he's still working his way back from that injury we mentioned earlier. Miller took a tumble, but gets back up. Such a great matchup between Miller and Keller. Ball with Keller here. Keller's going to take a deep shot and a big save as he makes Niedermeyer work. But Niedermeyer with the save. Another shot for St. Mary's. Four shots, four saves. And Niedermeyer really had a range to his left on that one. Did a great job seeing that one all the way in. Is able to get his hands on that one. You know, that was all set up by what it looked like. I don't know if it was some miscommunication or what, but I saw Caleb Miller not really trying to close out that time on Keller, and he ended up with a free run and, and a nice lane for that shot. Well read by Parla Piano as Aiden Jeffries tried to get around the right side, and now it goes out for a Shawnee throw. Here comes Vince, excuse me, Coda Miller back into the game. Will Manker and Brady Triplett checking in for St. Mary's with nine minutes to go in the half. Ball played to midfield. Drury nods it behind him. The only one there is Vincent Holtzapple in a black uniform, though. Dieter did a good job getting a, a head on it and sending that backwards. But even if that would would have been able to clear the St. Mary's player, uh, once again, the Indians didn't have anybody back there to help him. Now a St. Mary's free kick. Dangerous spot here as they... As we saw all the power go out here. A little power surge, but I think our equipment's still set up somehow. And the game's going to continue, this time without any lights. So it is a little bit of a different dynamic, as you can still see the ball, but they're going to continue to play right now. Is There's also an issue with the clock, and it's back up. So we're going to – the scoreboard is back up and running, so at least we have the, the time here. But. And in soccer, the referees keep the time on a watch, too, so they're able to continue play without a scoreboard. I would imagine for the next eight minutes we could play with this kind of lighting. Only eight minutes to go until half. Shawnee takes it away. It's McGuire. McGuire trying to find Coda Miller. Miller fast. Miller gets a touch, and he's able to keep it in play with those wheels. Miller, in the light of the scoreboard, has it taken away, and a nice job defensively by St. Mary's. As well, there's a foul, and wondered if they could get continuation, but they say no. Yeah, Miller, that time, great hustle getting down there by Coda, but eventually, when it got taken away from him, sliding in with cleats up, it's going to be the reason for the whistle. That ball shepherded out of bounds. Shawnee throw on the near side. Jemai did a great job that time maintaining his position, not giving anything. And eventually St. Mary's, they just ran out of room, had no choice but to send that one out. Indians with possession. Here's Miller. Miller finds McGuire. McGuire waits patiently, now plays down the left. And the ball will be a St. Mary's throw. That's what I saw from up here as well. Referees doing a nice job working together to figure that one out. So the scoreboard's still working here. The light's not on at the moment, but Normally with lights like these, it takes a little bit to get them fired back up. Sorry if the picture on your screen isn't quite conducive to a good viewing experience, but we're doing our best here. Tony finally down in their third of the field. Trying to make something happen here towards the end of the first half. Just kind of seems like right now there's just 
The way that St. Mary's is playing, I mean, it almost seems like they have an extra man out there. I mean, they don't, but they just seem to be everywhere. Shawnee just cannot find space. They can't get things going right now. They haven't been able to spread them out, and then here comes Keller on the opposite side. Ball knocked out. It'll be a corner kick. You mentioned that defense of St. Mary's. They've scored 50 goals this year, only given up seven. And three of those all came in one game against their in their one loss against Corners, Salina. Uh, take it by Doug Rupert. Doug Rupert will take this corner on the far side. First one for St. Mary's. This one played back post. Knocked down by Shawnee. Player takes a tumble. Holtz Apple still working. Now plays it on the ground. Miller with the touch. Miller gets around a defender. And a foul called back in the box. So a free kick for Shawnee with four and a half to play here in the half. Niedermeyer trying to go quickly, trying to hopefully get something going before St. Mary's get their defense set. Once again, St. Mary's right there to send it back. Aiden Jeffries had it momentarily. McGuire working against Manker right there towards that near sideline. Manker doing a great job standing McGuire up and able to get that ball back. Ball nodded forward. And now it gets behind the defense. McGuire on side. McGuire closed off, has it knocked away. And a great sliding tackle by St. Mary's. I can't get the number from here. Good eyes from some of my colleagues up here in the press box. It was Reese Triplett with the slide. My tried to feed that one in Dakota Miller. The officials are going to say Miller was a little bit too far forward, so they're going to end up having an offsides call and a free kick. Beautiful night here in St. Mary's. Nice little breeze, not too hot, not too cold. Ball popped in the air, knotted down by St. Mary's up the right side. And a wild touch there as Shawnee and Connor Heitmeyer sprinting forward. That was great hustle by Heitmeyer. He had to cover a lot more ground and get up there just to get a foot on it. Still 0-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. St. Mary's trying to change that. Braden Keller. Keller down the left side looking for a cross. He's cut off by two defenders. This one cleared away. Back to St. Mary's. Now a heavy touch. Cross knocked away but out for a corner. Corner from St. Mary saw some pleading there from the Shawnee team. So I think they were Shawnee, trying to nine, convince the official that that had actually gone out off of a St. Mary's player. The Mary's official right there says no. Owen Will. It's another opportunity here for St. Mary's. They've gotten some great looks, just haven't been able to cash any in yet. Trying to put one in here before we head to half. Corner on the far side. It's lined up, sent to the middle of the box, and headed wide of the goal. A decent chance there, but inaccurate header and a Shawnee goal kick with a minute and a half. Keller was right there in the middle. I believe it was him who was able to get his head on it. It was either that him or Banker. Taken by Doug Rupert. As that one had a good look again for St. Mary's. Left in the half. Shawnee continues to play with fire down there, but they've been fortunate so far that none of them have been able to go in. Still working on the lights here down in the far corner. I don't see them popping back on. They often take a while to turn on, but usually if they're working, they'll at least have a small glint of light coming through. We'll see what happens at halftime, but we've got 56 seconds until then. Ball knocked back to the St. Mary's defense. Drury able to grab it, now sent down the left side. Shied. Again, in the light of that scoreboard, takes a touch inside, takes a shot. It's knocked away and cleared nicely to the other end by St. Mary's. 39 on the clock. First half of action. Here's Bender.
Bender to Shide. Shide not able to control. It was a hard pass up near the waist. Now Drury. Ball dropped all the way back to the Shawnee defense. Ball taken away. Ten seconds on the clock. Shawnee grabs it. They clear it away. Five seconds, and it will tick down to zero in your half. Ends with the score 0-0 zero, zero on that Charles River scoreboard. Still looking for our first Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken goal. We'll see if we get it in the second half. If the lights come back on, we'll be right back with more after this. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Welcome back to St. Mary's High School for the start of the second half, an extended halftime here at Rough Rider Stadium. But the lights are back on, and we are ready for play. Evan Skilleter and Nate Garlock with you, Megan Sherrick on the camera, and a pleasure to be with you, Nate. A first half with no goals, and really, if you looked at it on paper, probably you would say St. Mary's with the better chances. Yeah, absolutely. St. Mary's really seemed to dominate that entire first half. They really outplayed Shawnee in the midfield. And, you know, the physicality, we mentioned it um, a couple of different times where, you know, St. Mary's was just being the more physical team. They were dictating the pace of play. They, they were really dominating almost all aspects of that game and spent a lot of time on the offensive end. Got to give a lot of credit to the keeper, Drew Niedemeyer. He made some really good saves there in that first half to keep St. Mary's off of the scoreboard. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of effort level that Shawnee comes out with as it just kind of looked like they were a step slower, a little bit lacking. That's just not something you usually see out of them. But a lot of credit to St. Mary's as they really got after it. Their spacing was really good. We saw Keller as he has the ball at his feet right now as he sends that cross, and that one's going to go up and a little bit wide. But once again, St. Mary's picking up right where they left off. Four shots on goal for St. Mary's. Four saves for Nita Meyer. No shots on goal so far for Shawnee, though, which is uncharacteristic for a team that's had so much success this year putting the ball in the back of the net. But we talked about the St. Mary's defense and how they've only given up seven goals through ten games. And three came in one that was against Salina in their only loss of the season. This ball brought down by Colin Scheid. Gets the defender on his left side. Scheid working down the right. Scheid with the cross. Ball knocked down by the defender, Connor Rust. See, and I think that's the difference right there. If you take a look at that change of possession and then kind of trying to flip the field by the Indians, when St. Mary's does it, there is a lot of black jerseys down there as they come down on the offensive side of things. The long, the long ball that time that got down to Scheid, he only saw two white jerseys trailing, and they didn't seem like they were really trying to hustle up the field and kind of left Scheid with really nowhere to go with it. And it's just not something that you're used to seeing at, at Shoney right now. It just kind of seems that not quite themselves here tonight. I'll tell you what, though, if you're Shoney, you don't enjoy seeing shots on goal. But watching Niedemeyer tonight is he's going to have another opportunity here. It looks like that one's going to go wide. Uh, nice deflection that time by the Indians. But uh, uh, we're going to have a corner. But Niedemeyer, one of the more impressive goalies in this area. His first year starting varsity is he had to sit behind another great goalie from Shawnee. Well, getting his opportunity this year. And I'll tell you what, the play that he does in that net, sometimes it's just unreal. Third corner of the night for St. Mary's. Ball nodded toward the goal up and over. No harm there as Shawnee will have a goal kick. Your scoreboard tonight, by the way, sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. Learn more about them at criver.com. Ball to the middle of the field, brought down by Keller. Mental mistake that time by Drury. Now, you do not want to try to clear that towards the middle of the field. Not only did he go towards the middle of the field, he went backwards with it. Keller was right there. I think it might even have caught Keller a little bit off guard. He's a little surprised that the ball got played to him. Goal kick nonetheless for the Indians. Ball sent to the middle of the field. Knocked down by Cody Burt. Now on the far side, Aiden Jeffries. 
Jeffries gets it back, uh, gets under his foot, cleared away but cut out by St. Mary's. Here's Burt, Burt down the right. Jeffries gives chase, gets to it first. He's marked there by Connor Heitmeyer. All the way around the defense goes Jeffries. Now Scheid able to close a man off. St. Mary's gets it back. The Shawnee defense has played well, but as soon as they clear it away, St. Mary's normally on the end of it, dominating the possession stats, but I'm sure if you're an Indian, you're happy to see the zero on the scoreboard on the St. Mary's side. So a little bit of a misplay out there on the wide side. Scheid ended up having to just kick that one out as St. Mary's just continues to control things, giving themselves opportunities. Another one that was played into Niedermeyer that time, but St. Mary's just feels like they're right on the verge of getting one of these in. Nice high punt brought down by Scheid. What a touch there by Scheid to control the ball that was sky high. Now a step, this is Drury. Drury down the right, and the ball played across the face of the goal. McGuire brings it down. McGuire marked, takes a touch to his left, plays to the middle, knocked away. First corner coming up for the Indians. Good build up there as they generate a chance. And it all started with great hustle coming out of Coda Miller. Coda got on his horse that time, was able to get that one down and send across. And I don't think he really had any intent other than just to make sure it didn't go out. McGuire able to play it at his feet. Shawnee got the uh, corner that time, but not able to do anything with it. It was a nice in-swinging pass. Now they play it back down the left side. Some space to work. And good defense as that one's taken away. Cleared toward Parler Piano for Shawnee and ultimately gobbled up by St. Mary's. Ball in the middle. Now to the left. Here's Rupert. Rupert cuts inside. Rupert. Another touch, Rupert nowhere to go with it yet. Good patience from him. He'll drop it back to Burt. Burt still with it. Burt, maybe a chance. He shoots off the post and in. And a great job that time by number one, Cody Burt, working along that right side, had some traffic, was able to get the better end of the challenge, and then was able to get one by Drew Niedemeyer, which is no easy task. He had to send that one really wide. Niedemeyer with that long wingspan. If it had been anywhere else, he's able to get his hands on that one, but able to bounce that off of the far post. Ricocheted in, and St. Mary's with the one-nil lead here in the second half. Is Sean, he's gonna have to claw their way out of this one if they wanna keep this WBL winning streak alive. Shawnee quickly puts it back into play. McGuire in the center of the field, still with it. Hard pass to Drury who pops it up in the air but gets it back. Now McGuire, McGuire working to his right. Closed off by two defenders. He's got some work to do if he wants to play this in. Still has it, now he slips. Still has it and we've got a foul. Too much contact there by Vincent Holtzapple. Ball played quickly. Into the middle, Drury shoots right at the keeper, Ballweg. I love the quick restart that time, though, by McGuire. He did not wait or hesitate at all. And Drury was ready. Just good positioning that time by Ballweg to make sure that he read that one and had the angle. St. Mary's pings it forward. Here's Doug Rupert. Rupert plays it back. Burt, Burt sends it to the far side. Taken away by Heitmeyer. That one cleared over the fence. Nice souvenir for the fans. One run for <laughs> Shawnee. <laughs> by the way, that shot earlier that Ballweg saved, first shot on goal for Shawnee so far this evening. Now Shawnee trying to work it up the left side. To Miller over there. This one headed out of play. Shawnee throw near side. Still a lot of time left to go here in this one. 32-14 left here in the second half. But Shawnee really is 
not quite seem themselves. They're going to have to figure out some way to get a spark here. At St. Mary's, they have just seemed like they came out right from the get-go, ready to go. And we mentioned it, it wasn't that long ago where we said it, just, it felt like they were just poised to put one through. St. Mary's tries to play one in. Good touch by Shawnee, but it's back with the Riders. Rupert on the left. Rupert working against Tate Bender, sends it back behind for a goal kick. We'll be right back as the 31 and a half mark gets one nothing. Tonight's goals are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Fantastic goal scored by Cody Burt at the 34 minute mark and that's your only score of the night. Thank you to Lee's for sponsoring our goals this evening. St. Mary's on top of the defending Division II state champions as Drury gets behind the defense. Misplayed, Drury with a chance. Drury goes down, referee says no call, and Drury's got it trapped between his legs. A dangerous play and a free kick for Shawnee, or excuse me, for St. Mary's. The Shawnee sideline is just absolute, I mean, they just don't understand how that one wasn't as, you saw Drury have a free run in. He did a great job. It all was set up by the hustle play. Drury got after it quickly, gave himself an opportunity. And the, the official right down there saying that, no, the contact was incidental, was not forcible, didn't play through the back. And Shawnee obviously disagreed, would have loved that PK. Shawnee still with work to do, down one nothing nearing the half hour mark in this second half. Ball played up to Miller, quick touch. Miller, a little slow to get up. Shide trying to take it away from Cody Burt, ultimately does. Shide dribbles to the middle, Shide has it, dispossessed. Nice job by St. Mary's taking that away. I can't see the number on the far side. So Shide cover a lot of ground there to try to come back and challenge that one. But St. Mary's just continuing to have the ball at their feet. Another opportunity here. This one gets deflected, ends up at the feet of Keller. And we're seeing the action really pick up here from both teams. Be a corner for St. Mary's. It's their third, maybe their fourth, excuse me, their fourth of the night. Some substitutes ready to check in. They'll have to wait. This one played low right at the front post and it's knocked out for another. And now the substitutes will check in for Shawnee. It's Adam Jamai for St. Mary's. It's Will Ross and Owen Will. So Caleb Miller coming out of the game for Shawnee. Is, he does not come off of the field very often. He's a little shaken up. But they want to give him a quick breather, but I can't imagine. As long as he's okay, I can't imagine we're going to see him off for very long. And another one goes in off the corner, playing off that back post. My goodness, what a touch. Brady Triplett with the goal for St. Mary's, and that is a tough one to control. A high ball played to the back post and a one-touch finish. My goodness. How about that one as St. Mary's now up 2-0 just like that, and they send Miller back into this game. The Rough Riders that time, that one got sent. I'll tell you what, that was a great control of the ball because when he let that one go, it looked like it was going to go way over and not be something that Shawnee was going to have to be overly concerned about. But Triplett went up high with a great redirect, able to put that one into the back of the net. St. Mary's now feeling pretty comfortable with that 2-0 lead. And still putting the pressure on that back line of Shawnee. Indians working it up the right side. Here's Drury. Miller pulls it back. Miller closed off nicely by Connor Rust. Now down the right side, it'll be knocked out for a Shawnee throw. McGuire puts this one down. That's Jaden Harrison. McGuire now. Cross to the edge of the box. No 
one there to pull it down. He was looking for Drury, but he's not able to control. Now St. Mary's on the break, taken away by Shawnee. Here's Jemai. McGuire, some space to work in the midfield. Miller, Jemai. I don't think Miller expected Jemai to touch that one as he tripped over the top, and St. Mary's takes it away. Yeah, it looked like maybe a little miscommunication that time as Jemai stuck that out as Miller looked like he was going to try to get a run and split the defense. It's Al Wires for the Rough Riders trying to send another cross. Ball on the far side. Fight for possession as Shawnee just knocks it out of play. Substitute checking in, that's Michael Grothaus. Michael Grothaus and for Shawnee, number nine, Noah Scheid. Noah Scheid checks back in for Shawnee, replacing Drury. Drury once again giving Shawnee some great minutes. Has had some good opportunities. His hustle has put Shawnee in the good position. And I, I imagine it's going to be swig of water, a couple of breaths, and they're going to try to get Drury right back in. Here's another shot. Niedemeyer picks that one up. Not much behind it, but well taken by Braden Keller. Quick punt to the other end. Caleb Miller now. Miller to McGuire. McGuire tries to turn, but there's a defender right there to take it away. That was Holtzapple. Holtzapple still with possession. Now plays it behind the defense. Out comes Niedemeyer right into the head of Braden Keller. Still, St. Mary's being awfully aggressive. Can't fault them as they've got the momentum on their side. Yeah, I mean, St. Mary's, all these players, they know what he is at stake here. It's Coda going to have an opportunity. And he's going to, and they're going to say no as Coda Miller went in, tried to go wide of the keeper, Ballwig. And I think that the officials are going to try to say that maybe Coda flopped a little bit there might be the call. Is Well, that's that's got to be what he thinks happened. He was right there to make that call. That's the second time Shawnee has been inside that PK area. A player has gone down, but the call has not gone their way. Jemai, one touch pass. It's taken away. Shawnee may be playing a little more quickly than they are accustomed to as they pass it right back to St. Mary's who work it up the right side. You know, as we were saying, you know, this St. Mary's team, they're continuing to be physical and they know what's at stake. These guys know what Shawnee has done over the last four plus years here in the Western Buckeye League. And everybody wants to be the team that ends that streak and St. Mary's right now is absolutely feeling it. And I got a feeling I'm really surprised that time that Shy did not just pick up a, a yellow. As you saw some frustration out of Colin, he sent that one pretty wide after the whistle. As Shawnee can't believe that they got called for that one. 24 minutes and some change to play here. 2 0 St. Mary's on the Charles River scoreboard. Two least famous recipe chicken goals. Here's a ball played into the box and behind the target. Doug Rupert. You know, you can tell Shawnee that they are they're frustrated and you know they're not happy things aren't going their way, but there's still a lot of time left. Still just under 24 minutes left to go in this game. We've seen that Shawnee's able uh, capable of getting the ball down the field quickly and giving themselves an opportunity. They cannot let themselves fall asleep and let this frustration take over because if so, this is a very opportunistic St. Mary's team and they would love to put a few more in the net. St. Mary's still in possession, doing a nice job shielding off the defenders. Aiden Jeffries, he breaks himself loose. Jeffries finds some space on the left side. And offside call on Owen Will, who was in behind the defense. Shawnee tried to play this quickly. Niedermeyer puts it down. Niedermeyer with the big leg, looking where he wants to go with it. Breezy evening. Breeze working from left to right on your screen, and now call against St. Mary's as Will Ross had too much jersey, I suppose, on yeah, look Alex like, McGuire. Look like he was trying to play through his back that time. 
Now we just saw St. Mary's get a nice ball inside, give themselves an opportunity, and now it's going to be Shawnee looking to do the same thing. Parla Piano sets it down. He'll take four teammates lined up on the edge of the box on the backside. McGuire lined up at the box on the near post. Parla Piano pops it up. Ball knotted down by St. Mary's, still in the box. Shide not able to get there first. Good control from St. Mary's as they clear it to midfield. Shawnee gets possession, though. Down the right side, Drury trying to chase it. Drury tripped up a bit there as they'll call a foul against Connor Rust. And a yeah. good spot for a free kick here. So, see, we're, we're pretty close to the Shawnee sideline, and you can hear the coaches. And they're a little confused how that contact gets called, but not the ones where they're in the box. This ball played right at Ballweg, who's there to grab it. And not an easy one as Drury hopped right in front of him. Yeah, that time a good ball played in by McGuire. They had several opportunities as Drury, if he was able to get his head on that one, would have been able to deflect that one in. Or if nothing else, he was shield shielding the goalie, to, hoping to disrupt his ability to save it. Ball we did a nice job with the concentration and a little bit more contact again as Jemai ends up on the ground. Say Aiden Jeffries had too much contact there. Now Jemai, a little bit of space, gets past one defender, plays it on the ground to McGuire. McGuire has it knocked away, trying to get on the end, still has it. You see Shawnee playing with a lot more sense of urgency than we've seen so far in this game as they continue with the quick restarts. They're not trying to waste any time here. They know that they got to get two goals somehow. Great job by the defense of St. Mary's down there, though. And this one headed wide right. Beautiful header as that one came in, and that had a little English on it from Caleb Miller, but it goes just wide. Will Manker, Doug Rupert, and Brady Triplett all checking in for St. Mary's. Clock down now to 20 and a half. To play in this game, still 2-0. St. Mary's on top. A goal at the 34-minute mark by Cody Burt. And Adam Triplett scoring at the 31 and a half mark of this half. Parla Piano to Jemai. Jemai has it taken away. It's Triplett. Triplett. Too much contact against Jemai, so a free kick for St. Mary's just in front of midfield. St. Mary's not in any hurry here. They are more than content to take as much time as they're allowed and let this clock continue to run as we are under 20 left to play here. Old Apple will take Old Apple right at the goal, but goes wide right. Good distances. If he'd have been able to put that one on target, wouldn't have been an easy save for Niedemeyer. Gonna end up in a goal kick though. As you see Coda Miller come back in and they got their two speedsters on the field now. Coda Miller and Hunter Drury. We've seen what they've been able to do when they've had some open space in front of them. And I'm sure Shawnee hoping to be able to take advantage of that. Drury shifts to the middle and heads this forward. St. Mary's will safely play it out. Miller. Wants to throw this in quickly, no one there to do so. Now in for Drury, gives it back. Miller a little space. Miller to the right, crosses, cut out. Holtzapple there. Nice job by Holtzapple to make sure that he's able to get that one. Is There's going to be a whistle. Now against the Indians. It's twice that Shawnee has kicked the ball away. After a foul here down two, you'd think that they'd want to set it down right where St. Mary's needs to kick it. And right now, every second counts as they're trying to they got to get the first one in, and hopefully that'll open the net to give them an opportunity here. But they got to get going quickly. Miller, Caleb Miller in the center of the field. Miller taking on three different St. Mary's defenders right there, trying to find Shine on that far side, taking away. St. Mary's doing a great job here on defense. Fight for possession on the far side. Still clean contact all the way through. 
Ball at the top of the box. Good tackle, good contact. Maybe a chance developing. Shawnee finally able to clear, but not far. Ball with Will Minker. Now on the far side, here's a cross, and it's near the post, just wide of the goal. Nice cross in a good spot on that back post, but just not able to get there before it hits the outside. St. Mary's has done a great job on those crosses. They've been able to almost every time find the right depth and the right angle to give themselves opportunities as that one just missed going wide. Now a call against the Indians, free kick, St. Mary's. Shy not happy, feeling like he got pulled down that time as he lost his balance, but the call once again gonna go to St. Mary's on the free kick. Gonna try to see if they can't cash in another opportunity. Played to the edge of the box. Back post, scoots through. Here's a shot, knocked away. Shot was taken by Cody Burt. It's gonna result in another corner here for St. Mary's. 16 and a half, some substitutes checking in. St. Mary's sends in Owen Will, Adam Jamai checking in for Shawnee. Still ticking, 16-10. Corner kick for St. Mary's taken by Doug Rupert. Doug Rupert will set it down. Will Ross over at the spot ready to check in. Ball played back post, headed toward goal. It's wide, ball still in play and a call against St. Mary's now as Shawnee gets a free kick and Niedermeyer will set it down quickly. There was another great send from the corner. St. Mary's had a few more opportunities, but not able to cash in. This time, not the greatest clear by Niedemeyer. As St. Mary's was right there for, but fortunately goes out of bounds. Shied quickly with the throw in, trying to get Miller going forward. Drury, he drops it back. Here's Miller. Now Shied. Back to Miller. Shied, but it's taken away. They were looking for the give and go, but. Not able to convert. Ball played wide. St. Mary's trying to get there first. Not able to do so. Shawnee quickly back into play. Caleb Miller. Miller has it taken away. Time it looked like Miller was trying to play it over to McGuire, but a great heads up play by St. Mary's. Get their foot in that one. Quickly going the other way though for Shawnee. Tackle from St. Mary's, still a Shawnee throw. In for Caleb Miller. Miller takes some contact, but Shawnee keeps possession. Ball popped into the box. It falls for the Indians, but it goes wide. A good ball played in, but Coda Miller not able to turn and hit. He tried to one time it, might have had time to pull it down and fire a shot instead, but nonetheless, a goal kick for St. Mary's. Yeah, that was a tough play by Coda Miller that time, as that is not an easy ball to even get a foot on, let alone be able to do it with some power. He did do that, but couldn't quite get his hips around to square that one up. And Shawnee continuing to try to press things here on offense. Back to the box, Caleb Miller. Shied, he's gonna take a deep shot, and it's over and wide. Not a bad effort from the edge of the box. And for St. Mary's, number 22, Michael Grothaus. Shawnee's finding a few more opportunities here in the second half than they did in the first, but still not, just a little bit off target, not able to cash these in. St. Mary's doing an excellent job just continuing to try to dictate. I get to touch over to the right. Now Bender, his ball knocked away by the St. Mary's defense. Jamai trying to run through it, and good defense there by Will Manker. It's good body control. It easily could have been a foul. It would have hit Jamai too hard, but instead 
able to make sure the contact was clean and knock it away. Now Caleb Miller. Up the left. Good body control there by McGuire. McGuire into the box around a couple defenders, drops it off for Scheid, but St. Mary's able to clear once again. McGuire had a good angle, started to get cut off, and I think he just dropped that one off to Scheid a little too soon. Shawnee still with just one shot, according to the scoreboard. On goal, that is. Now a free kick for the Indians as they'll set this down. Relatively dangerous spot. McGuire's going to put it down to take. He's got three players on the back post, make it four. Plays it back there. Ball knotted up, and it's still in play. Scheid sends it toward goal, and it's tapped behind by Drury and harmlessly out for a goal kick. You can see Shawnee really pressing things. They're at least giving themselves a lot more opportunities than they did there in the first half, but have yet to be able to cash in. As you can tell that defense from St. Mary's, they're bending but not breaking. 11 and a half to play. Two nothing on the Charles River scoreboard. Ball knocked all the way back to Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer, low driving kick. Gets all the way back, they'll play it back to their goalkeeper, Ballweg. Throw for Shawnee. Bender will send it in. He'll get it back. Bender over to Miller. Miller, nice touch. Keeps possession. Shide. Shide, quick touch to his left. Shide plays it to the middle. Still some problems. Miller's going to try a left-footed shot. It's knocked away by the Rough Riders. Shawnee still threatening. Ball knotted down. Riders trying to get it out of that final third. Tons of pressure, but they're handling it well. Still haven't surrendered a goal. Now it's taken away. It's Jeffries. Jeffries up the left, trying to get around Bender. Edge of the box, Jeffries, the touch to his left. And too much contact by Aiden Jeffries. Yeah, I think Jeffries would have been all right with the contact as the officials have been letting them play, but you saw as he went around that time, he lowered his shoulder that time. Clock stops. Looks like we're going to have an injury to Doug Rupert. So Rupert limps off. Sub in for St. Mary's number 22, Michael Groathouse. Michael Groathouse will check in for Rupert. It'll be a Shawnee free kick to send it back into play. Niedermeyer playing it to midfield, plays it right at St. Mary's. He'll play it back into the box as Niedermeyer just scoots to his left to pick it up. That one played high in the air. Very high punt that time by Niedermeyer. St. Mary sends it out. Back into play by Shawnee, but McGuire turned before he had it, still ends up with the ball. McGuire to his right, Drury now. Drury runs into two defenders, and again, the St. Mary's defense holds strong as that ball gets into the box for Shawnee. You gotta give St. Mary's a ton of credit right now. They don't look like they're panicking, they're not in any hurry. And they are just standing tall there on defense as Shawnee right now just not finding any sort of really you know, good opportunities. We've seen them be able to take some shots and do some redirects and try to get some things going, but nothing that's been great. Riders again clear it out of the final third. Piano steps up, down the right to Bender. He has some space. Bender tries to play one back post. It's nice and high. Maybe a chance. Here's a shot, and nothing behind it as it's knocked away 
St. Mary's again. Tough defense. Shawnee trying to get back, but it's cleared away. Gotta love that hustle from Bender that time. It was a great ball, gave his team an opportunity. And then the hustle play to try to get it back lead to that one getting kicked out as this is a really long cross that Shine's gonna be able to track down. Shied with some space, drops it for Miller. He tries a shot, it's knocked down. Miller with a defender on his back, plays it out to Shied. Shied tries the cross again. The riders bend, but don't break. Now the clock really working against Shawnee, under eight left to go. They gotta find a way to get two in, they gotta go quick. St. Mary's though, they can taste it. You can tell they are still playing with a sense of urgency. These kids, they know what is on the line here, if they can hold on to get this win. Here's a shot from deep, and it's on the ground. We'll call it a shot on goal, the second for Shawnee, and a save for St. Mary's. Ballwig again. and ping back and forth. Shawnee still trying to play it deep into their scoring third. Miller plays it down the right side. Drury keeps it in play. Trying to get around a defender, but he can't. Tell you what, nice been, job. Yeah, I've been incredibly impressed with the hustle though of Drury. As it was a little bit of a miss hit as he was running down on offense. And it was only because of his hustle that he was even able to give himself an opportunity to keep that one in play and to get the cross. It's Vince Holtzapple on the defense for the Rough Riders. Farley Piano up to Drury. He gets his back climbed by Holtzapple. Jemai puts it down quickly. McGuire it will be McGuire to take, sorry. Six minutes left to go. Shawnees, if they can figure out a way to get something here, they still give themselves an opportunity. Knocked away by St. Mary's and cleared. Only as far as Parla Piano as he comes back for it. Parla Piano. And no one down that right side for Shawnee as it's taken away. Good tackle by McGuire. Can't quite keep it in play. So it'll be a St. Mary's throw. Two substitutes checking in. Cody Burt, Cody Will Burt as well Colton as Sprague. Will Ross. And Colton Sprague checks in for the first time. Spray, excuse me. Here's Jemai in the midfield. Jemai plays it up to Drury. Drury closed off, another nice clear. That's Cody Burt. Not a great drop off there, but it does end up with a free kick for Shawnee. McGuire ready to take. And we've got clock stoppage at 440. Well, clock still ticking. Now it stops. Not sure what's happening here. Referee just marking off oh, okay. the distance. There's some time that I would think that they have to add to the clock because there's about six, five, six seconds that continue to go after the officials stop the clock. So we mentioned that the officials do the officials do stop or keep the time on the field as it looks like there's an Indian player who might be cramping. So the clock still continued to stop, but at some point they're gonna have to make those adjustments on time, I would, I would think. So the Shawnee player Gets up, will head off the field. 4.37 on the clock. Sell. 
substitute for St. Mary's as Owen Will checks in. Now McGuire will take. Ball sent back post. Knotted away once again by St. Mary's. Popped up in the air. A player goes down and it's a call against Shawnee. So St. Mary's with the free kick. 422 and counting. Looking for their ninth win of the season. Looking to hand Shawnee their first loss of the season. Yeah, the top of the WBL gets a little bit interesting. If St. Mary's can hold on here, you have Salina with one loss to Shawnee. You'd have St. Mary's with one loss to Salina. And you'd have Shawnee with one loss to St. Mary's. So still a lot to would be have to be figured out there in the WBL, but you cannot glance over the fact that the St. Mary's right now is three minutes and 40 seconds away from being the first WBL team to knock off Shawnee in over four years. It's a crazy stat. Old Saffle takes that one away. He's cut off by Jamai. Jamai had some space, but stops. Now plays it down the right, but doesn't have a runner. Ball makes it all the way through. St. Mary's comes back. Jamai will have it. Jamai with the cross, knocked away by the Riders, cut out by Holtz Apple, cleared to midfield. Nice step right there by Owen Will. And Will still with possession, now taken away. Slightly put off by that tackle by McGuire. Miller comes back. Second turf monster siding brought to you by Scott Ross Realty. Now a foul on the far side, so a free kick for Miller. He'll quickly put it back into play. Right at the edge of that final third, brought down by Drury. Jamai, he has it taken away. Good job in the middle by Will Ross. St. Mary's right now, they just seem to be everywhere. Shawnee just can't shake them. Every time they turn around or every time the ball goes to roll, there's a black jersey. This Rough Rider defense has been up to the task tonight. Knuckling punt right there by Nita Meyer. Shied to Jamai. Jamai plays it down the right side. It's Coda Miller. Miller drags it back for Bender. Bender a chance to cross, now does. And it's not a down by St. Mary's and cleared to midfield. Now some space for the Riders. Owen Will uses that space, sends it outside to Michael Grothaus. Under two left to play here. As you can tell, look at their players on the sidelines. They, they know that they are inching ever closer to a huge, uh, as they have, the clock will stop here on the subs with under four to go and St. Mary's up, but they, what would have to be considered a huge upset here. left and just crossed the line. The referee will stop the clock once again. 119. We're gonna have a clock stoppage here as the St. Mary's player continue playing after the whistle and sent the shot. So fortunate for Shawnee. Try to save some time here. So it's a throw for Shawnee as the referee corrects things. Good job getting things under control by veteran official Michael Laus. Well officiated game by this crew. Ball still in play, Shawnee pops this one to the edge of the box. Miller had some space, brings it down for Drury. Drury goes down from behind. So Shawnee with a free kick, edge of the box, maybe a chance to put one on goal but only 50 seconds left. And now the clock will stop with 48 left as we've got an injured Rough Rider on the field. With that, we'll step aside. Two nothing, final 48 seconds coming up for you after the break right here on WOSN.
48 seconds on the clock. 2-0, St. Mary's leads. Shawnee with a free kick after a foul. Miller sends it toward goal. It's off the wall. So Shawnee with a corner coming up. Not much time left. Have to imagine it is over here, but Shawnee will continue. McGuire plays it to the edge of the box. Ball knotted away by St. Mary's, and it's cleared with 25 on the clock. All the way back to Niedemeyer. He passes on the ground to midfield, down to 17 seconds as St. Mary's is closing out a big victory over WBL rival Shawnee. Nine on the clock, ball to midfield, and that's going to do it. At home, the Rough Riders knock down and knock out the state champ Shawnee Indians. The first loss for the Indians in WBL play in four years. What a match we had as St. Mary's played nearly perfect soccer. Yeah, I mean, an unbelievable game by St. Mary's. You could tell almost right from the beginning that they were just playing at a different speed than Shawnee tonight. It took just too long for Shawnee to get going. We saw them pick it up there in that second half, but it was just a little bit too late as that momentum went to St. Mary's, and they weren't able to do anything with it after that. Two goals in this one, both for St. Mary's as Cody Burt scores the first, and Adam Triplett scores the second. Sorry for all the noise on the screen, but it is mayhem here in St. Mary's. We appreciate the support of our sponsors tonight, Charles River on the scoreboard, Lee's on the goals. And as always, thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Soccer on WOSN. Final time from St. Mary's, it's 2 nothing. Riders win to move to 9-1 as Shawnee suffers their first loss of the season. For Megan Sherrick on the camera and my partner, Nate Garlock, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.